A little bit of background about myself. I've been a teacher for 30 years um, and I'm also a coach. And I created this website um, probably about five years ago because it kind of reflected where, where I was in my life. So I've been a teacher and I've believed in the power of education. I've Education has been very good to me. Um, and I've been generally successful at it, even though there are times where I've struggled. But I also realise, you know, a lot of my experience has brought me into contact with um, many, many children for whom education hasn't worked for, for one reason or another. Um, it could be because they have a learning disability. It could be because they are, they've been so stressed by their education. I've worked with children who have eating disorders, who've... Um, been unable to sort of function because they become so stressed about their work and exams and I also have worked in schools where children weren't particularly interested in academic work but that's because they were interested in a sort of a religious framework a religious structure of life and learning um, and academics or what we understand to be academics came a poor second so I've seen lots of different um examples of education and how they either work or don't work um, however I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the sort of brief story about how I got into this idea of unschooled and what it means to me so before I became a teacher I was working in theatre I was an actor and I trained as a theatre director and I used uh, a book an amazing book written by a guy called Keith Johnstone who really was a man ahead of his time um, and he spoke about education as a destructive process and what he meant by that was you take a child who's perfect and you basically teach them that they're not perfect <laughs> you teach them they've got to jump through this hoop and this hoop and this hoop to be okay to be understood to be approved of um, and also uh, that they have a natural creativity which we then stifle i mean i've seen that process working i've done that with children because i've worked with children who are, t who are doing the 11 plus who just want to write imaginative stories and i've been that person who said no we have to do it according to this format that the examining board wants to see and these little 10 year olds look at me they're like but i can't write about aliens anymore you know so i've seen it and I've lived it. So getting back to Keith Johnstone, you know, education kills creativity. It kills spontaneity in children in some senses. Now, that's really where Ken Robinson came in with his TED Talk, his very famous TED Talk. I think he was must have been very much influenced by Keith Johnstone as I was. So even when I started teaching and I actually started teaching French and drama, I realised that on, on some level there was, a, there was an aspect of teaching that was destructive. Um, in some ways it robbed people of their consciousness. Keith Johnstone used to say, um, if I hadn't have failed at school, I'd have had far less of my consciousness available to me than otherwise. Now, what does he mean by consciousness? Well, Keith Johnstone went on to create um, a spontaneous improvisation troupe and his work became the basis of something called theatre sports, and that became the basis of a really popular TV show called Whose Line Is It Anyway? So he was an improviser and his imagination was the thing that allowed him uh, access to his creativity. And he realised that on, on some level, his schooling prevented him from doing that. OK, so as a, as a drama teacher, um, I didn't have to worry too much about that because I was doing a lot of improvisation work. I was working with kids on a very creative level but as my career progressed um, and I started working with special needs kids then I developed in, into English teaching and I became an English tutor I realized that I as much as I enjoyed it because it suited me I had become part of the system and you could say part of the problem so one of the things that always fascinated me was this idea of homeschooling and I think you can probably um, see the connection with what's going on at the moment but homeschooling was always something that uh, really divided people's opinions because it's a very uh, the, the thing about school right the thing that I the, the problems that I have with schooling I'll come back to homeschooling in a moment is there's, there's, there's certain problems with it number one 
it's an institution, right? And institutions breed mediocrity. They do not allow necessarily people to excel. Like, for example, if you're amazing at maths, why can't you do A-level at 13 if you're able to cope with the work? No, you have to be at the level of everybody else. And it's standardised, okay? So it, in some respects, it breeds mediocrity. It doesn't breed excellence. Um, and on, on, on another level... It kind of that there is a there's another book that I will want to refer to, which is um, "Dumbing Us Down" by John Taylor Gatto, and he talks about the seven lies of schooling. And, and the lies of schooling, one of the lies of schooling is nothing that we teach you really matters. Why? Because we do it for an hour, that's it, and then you go on to do something else. So the inherent or the the, the silent message there is that nothing really matters. Now. The opposite to that is this idea um, that I've learned about and read about from other writers called deliberate practice. If you want to get really good at something, you want to master it, some people call it the 10,000 hours rule, you have to do deliberate practice on that thing. So here's an example that might resonate with people, uh, and you might find this a little bit weird in, in a conversation about education, but I hope some of you or more quite a lot of you are aware of a performer an artist a musician and her name is Billie Eilish I think she's 17 or 18 years old she's been completely homeschooled along with her brother and they have managed to or they have they spent the majority of their time on their passion making music and that, that's now become their career and they've now um really develop that work because they've had the time to do the deliberate practice uh i mean if you really want another example someone like greta thunberg for example what's happened since she's not been in school she's become a world leader in the climate change movement whether you whether you agree with that or not you can't deny that she's used her time profitably <clears throat> one of my interviewees on the on the early podcast series of unschool coaching um, is now a writer and she became a writer when she had to leave school as a result of uh, anxiety over bullying. So she used her time to do deliberate practice into the thing that became her passion. So in my mind, you know, the beginnings of unschooled coaching, and that, that's really where it came from. So back to homeschooling, the problem that people have with homeschooling is this idea of socialisation um, and Obviously, that you know the, these issues are, are live issues at the moment. So I would I'd appreciate uh, your feedback and your thoughts on them. I think one of the points that I would make about the socialisation argument is that we're also seeing in schools uh, a massive increase in bullying. We're seeing in schools a massive increase in mental health problems among children. So whilst I realise that socialisation is important and learning to function in the world of work and exist you know exist in the world of work and be a nice cog in the machine of society is important there are also downsides to it there are also downsides to it it's it's going to be a balance and it's going to be one of those balances that I think a lot of parents are going to be um, thinking about at the moment so I wanted to make this video because I was looking at my channel and I realized that I'd never done a video myself uh, talking about what unschooled means to me and I can't really think of a more uh, opportune moment to create a piece of content for people who may be having those thoughts and those conversations uh, at this point in time. My original starting point for unschooled uh, was two questions you know what what skills did you not learn at school uh, that you needed to be successful in life and also what did you have to unlearn from your schooling to in order to be successful in life. So hopefully I've covered some of those bases and, and encourage you to answer some of those questions for yourself. So for example, if you are a parent at home with young children, um, think about, I mean, a lot of the advice that I've seen on homeschooling has actually been very good. A lot of it has, has, has kind of said, you know, of course there is a curriculum, of course the curriculum is important, um, but, do let your children follow their passions and their interests because you never know where they're going to lead. I think the other thing I would say is do encourage your children, if, if you're an older child, older young person watching this, do look into 
how you learn. Start thinking about how you learn because that's one of my big bugbears and I might create a, uh, create a piece of content on that as we go along. One of the things I always do as a teacher is I teach people how to learn before I ever start working with them. I personally use mind mapping if you want to explore that. Um, and if you want to look at the left and right side of the brain and how they work together. So those are my kind of nuggets of advice. And um, I do hope some of it's been useful for you. Um, please drop a comment below to let me know what you think. See you next time.